What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always, we're going to be breaking down the overall markets, taking a look at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about a trading update, what did I personally do today on the 23rd of May in terms of my trades, any day trading going on, any swing trading, we're going to be talking about that in today's video, as well as taking a look at some other stocks that I'm personally watching and eating. ETFs for the rest of this week, for the rest of this month, and heading into the month of June in 2019. But before we do get into the topic of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there, the viewers, the supporters, the subscribers, if you enjoy the content here, if you find value in this content, go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you want to stay further connected with our community, two links down below in the description box, the Strive Smart Discord group chat and the Strive Smart Facebook group. Make sure you guys get in there. Free communities with a ton of valuable information and a bunch of valuable people in there talking every single day about the stock market. So let's just get right into it, guys. Today was an absolutely bloody day. We had a bit of a rebound towards the end of the market, but for most of the day today, guys, it was just selling, selling, on top of selling, on top of selling, bloody day out there. So the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies, ended up closing the day down $34 here, down 1.19% here. I think it was down 2% at the lowest today, maybe 1.9, 1.8%, somewhere in that little uh, area. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 286 points at the close, down uh, 1.11% here. And the NASDAQ, no, it did not op It did not close plus four, guys. This is the future. It's up a bit after hours here, but just like a lot of the times when we have bloody days, the NASDAQ got hit the hardest out of the three major indexes that we tracked today. I think it ended up closing um, under 2%, I believe like 2.1% in the red today. If we look exactly where it closed at about 4 o'clock, you can see, and you can see the big spike up that we saw here towards the close of the market. Literally in power hour, the NASDAQ went from 72.75 all the way up to about 73.25, uh, so that's about a 50-point move there, and we ended up closing about, let's see, roughly a little bit uh, uh, lower from where we are right now. So it was a pretty bloody day out there in terms of the three major markets that we track, guys. You know, the tensions with China, they're starting to wear on the stock market more and more, guys. You know, this is getting to territories right now in the major uh, indexes on some longer term charts where in a tech, on a technical basis, you know, we could be selling off a lot more from here. And let's get into those um, technical spots on the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ very quickly. And if you recall in yesterday's video, guys, in a couple of videos last week, I was talking about a potential head and shoulder pattern forming on the SPX. I know it's not exactly aligned with this left shoulder here, if you're looking at this little right shoulder that was formed, but it's still kind of what I'm seeing here. Here. And for those of you guys that don't know what a head and shoulder is, just take a look at this chart here. You see this? This uh, little pop-up and this little uh, kind of a, it looks like a candy cane, right? This is the left shoulder. This is the head where we ended up going up to all-time highs, pulling back. And then this, what we just formed, is a right shoulder. And this is kind of what we were talking about in last week's video because, in a couple of videos last week, because we were noticing the resistance under the 50 simple moving average here on the 184-hour chart. So that, in my, in my technical analysis, was telling me, you know, we're seeing some resistance. This could be the start of a right shoulder. And here, a week later, that's exactly what ended up happening. Right, And we broke that technical support on the 180 SMA that we were talking about in yesterday's video. And now we're kind of trading where we got uh, about a week, a week and a half ago when we actually sold down or sold off to the 2800 level on the S&P. And let me show you guys on a 20-day, one-hour chart here where I'm talking about. You notice how we sold off all the way down here on the 13th of May? Well, we ended up holding that exact spot of support today, and we saw that nice little run towards the end of the market. So in my opinion at this point, for us to see further selling off on the S&P, we need to break two levels here. 
We need to break this 28 level, uh, 2800 level from a couple of trading days ago, about 10 trading days ago. And we also need to break this old resistance, which is now new support in those two spots they're pretty much the same level, right? $2,800. So for us to see more selling, we need to see a break into the 2700s for the S&P 500. And who knows, guys, if this weakness continues into tomorrow, we may see a break into the $2,700 level tomorrow if the markets do get ugly again. So that's kind of what I'm seeing here. You know, the S&P is just getting weak. The markets are getting weak and we're so close to that full-on break. And if we break here, you know, it could get ugly and we'll be forming, um, you know, deeper bearish pattern at that point on the S&P 500. So, you know, smaller time frame charts, you know, we're seeing the descending pattern. Nothing really crazy here. Nothing really different from yesterday. You guys can see all day on the one day, one minute, we were trending down. Then we had that nice little pop on power hour here. Hopping over here to the Dow Jones on the one day, one minute, we're seeing the same thing. Downtrending for the whole day, power hour came, and then all of a sudden, the market, the Dow, ended up flying, right? We ended up getting, how many points was that from this little, uh, the low we hit, about 25, 340, and we closed closed about 150 points higher. So that's quite a uh, swing there. 150 points in power hour to the upside for the Dow. That's a pretty solid recovery there. If we're looking back here on the 180 day four hour chart, we're no longer trading between 25, 500 and 26, 200 right now. That 700 point level that we've been trading in, it feels like forever, but it's really only been the past roughly two weeks. We're no longer trading that uh, in between between that level we've now uh, we've now broken the 25 500 level of support we're trending just under it now maintaining it as a resistance level and this is a pretty uh, key break on the Dow now that we ended up breaking this level guys we're trading in between $25,000 and $25,500 so we're in this little 500 point gap right now and if we end up getting rejected tomorrow by this resistance the new resistance here, we continue to sell off. I to take a look and see, are we going to hold $25,000 on a technical basis? If we don't, we end up maintaining that into the long weekend that we have. You know, who knows, right? If that ends up happening, we may be trading in this level of 500 points for the next couple of days. Who knows, guys? But right now, the major, the two major ones that we follow, the Dow, the S&P, we saw some critical, critical support breaks today in uh, the price action. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ very quickly here on the 184-hour chart. We also broke a support, a critical support here on the NASDAQ today at about $7,300. We can see we bri uh, briefly broke that support level. We got down to about $7,265-ish. We ended up breaking above the resistance again. So now we're also, we're actually, we're again maintaining this level as a support. We broke it. We broke above the resistance again, and now we're holding it as a support. So I just wait and see, you know, tomorrow in tomorrow's action, are we going to sell off further? And one way that you can understand this before the market opens, you can take a look at the market futures. If you have thinkorswim, you know, this slash ES, this is the S&P future, the slash YM, that is the Dow Jones future, and where is it? The slash N2, the one you're seeing right now, this is the NASDAQ. NASDAQ future and this you can see pretty much throughout the night and before the market opens so you can understand you know are we going to open up red are we going to open up green and this will better help in assisting your trades for that morning for that day you get to understand where the market could be headed so you know at this point if we end up breaking 7300 which i think is possible because i don't think the selling is done i've literally been saying this for about a week and a half two weeks now since we've started selling aggressively it's been more like three weeks i think there's more uh selling in store guys you know i've been saying this the start of 2019 was absolutely ridiculous, right? Markets rebounded 20%. You know, these levels, they're not going to hold for a long time. That was kind of uh, an inflated price, an inflated stock market. It shouldn't have gone up 20%. You know, these levels, they're just correcting themselves. And it makes sense to me. So if we break that level, 
Next support's going to be at around 72.25 on the NQ, but everything's just looking down, guys. You know, bearish cross here, 50 SMAs acting as a resistance. You know, everything is pointing to more selling on the technical side here. The 20-day, one hour, you get to see it on a closer basis. You know, the bearish cross was just formed, uh, I believe, two days ago here on the 20-day, one hour. Lower lows, lower highs. The selling today pushed us to a lower low here, lower from the previous low, which was at about $7,300. So it's not looking too pretty right now. And again, it's just been, the market's just been weak. You know, volume was super low a couple of days ago, and that kind of raised a red flag. We were talking about that in the group, you know, typically low volume days. And the, I think the market... I forget what day it was actually, but low volume days and then followed by more red, you know, that's pretty weak in my personal uh, in my personal opinion, right? So that's kind of the market update for today, guys. Let's talk about the trading update very quickly. What I personally ended up trading today. I traded TVIX today, guys. TVIX, this is a uh, volatility ETF that does well when the volatility, the VIX is going up in price as well as the markets are going down, right? Typically when the markets are selling off aggressively, that's spiking up the VIX because volatility starting to shoot up. And you can see here the VIX was up $2.17 today, which in turn pushes TVIX up in price. And hence, you can see that here, you know, TVIX was up $2.60 at the close, very solid, nearly 13% day in the green for TVIX, right? And if we're looking here on the one day, one minute, we got that initial spike on TVIX. I missed this, to be honest with you guys. I did not get in on this. We got that pullback. We got the pop up again. I was watching it, still didn't take a position. And the fact that we were selling off here, it kind of worried me a bit because this was a lower high from the previous. Although we made a higher low, you know, at this point we were kind of in a little bit of a wedge, right? Take a look at this. And I wanted to see, are we going to hold here and potentially break out? We didn't do that, right? We broke the support of this little wedge that you're seeing here. And then we actually pushed below this support at 2275. And at this point in time, I was like, Okay, TVIX, it's probably not going to be a play today, but then, guys, we got a bottoming out point at 22.50, which was a higher low from actually the pre-market low right around $22, and then we started to spike up, and then we see if we extend this little wedge, you guys can see with the extension of that wedge here, if I just draw a new one for you all. You guys can see the breakout here, right? I was drawing this, and we see the breakout, and that is where I ended up taking a position on TVIX. And at this point in time, guys, what time was this? About 11.30 um, Eastern Standard Time. Take a look at the VIX, right? The VIX had that big uh, sell-off here, and towards 11.30, that's when it ended up picking up steam, right? And if we're taking a look at the SPX as well, you know, we had that little run up. This is when the VIX was selling off as well as TVIX. And then when the S&P started to pick up the sell-off, which we saw again at about 11 a.m. Eastern Standard, we were selling off. That is when I ended up taking a, the position in TVIX. Again, volatility was starting to spike, and then I was able to profit. So, you know, once we broke out of this little wedge here, I ended up taking a position. I believe it was like $23.25. And then I ended up just riding it up past the resistance from what time was this? About 9.45, uh, 9.45, that first resistance from the big spike that we saw in the morning. I ended up getting in or getting out rather after we broke that resistance, giving me about a 1.6, 1.7% profit. So, you know, that was it for the day for me, to be honest with you guys. You know, I day traded uh, TVIX. I'm pissed at myself a little bit because Drip is another one that I just completely missed and, and just uh, dropped the ball on again today, right? Today was one of those days for Drip that it kept going up and I kept telling myself, 
I'm going to get in on the pullback. I'm going to get in on the pullback. And we just never got that pullback for, uh, for me to get in, right? We noticed the big spike. We got the sell-off. At this point, we were seeing lower highs being made. We were pulling down. And I was telling myself at this point, okay, it's cooling off. It literally had a 10 12% day uh, yesterday. It's already up like 15% at this point. I shouldn't chase it. And I just stopped looking at it, to be completely honest with you guys, because sometimes I get tempted. I know a lot of you guys can relate to this. I get tempted to hop into a trade. And then I ask myself, is this a good opportunity to hop in, right? This was already up 15% today. And again, yesterday it was up 12%. And I just made the decision to just Stop looking at it. I didn't want to make a FOMO decision, fear of missing out decision. You know, sure, if I did get in on this dip, I would have profited a bit, but it was not much at all. It didn't really move much. Actually, it was a decent move. Actually, I'm wrong. It was about a 4 or 5% move. But again, I just didn't feel like the risk reward was in my favor uh, for drip. But nonetheless, guys, this is one that I am actually just going to continue to watch because I've realized when the markets have been selling off, you know, uh, drip has been going up. Not that they're completely correlated, but XOP, the ETF that drip trades upon, this one has just been getting hammered, um, you know, over the past couple of weeks. And it kind of correlates to the market because the market's been getting hammered as well. So, you know, let's say the market continues to sell off. We might see an XOP sell off further for uh, drip to go even higher in price. But at this point, you know, XOP is completely oversold. You know, we might see a rebound. So at this point, guys, you know, I'm not chasing drip. I'm actually looking to see if we get a rebound on XOP for potential play in Gush, which is actually the inverse ETF to drip. And Gush is the bull ETF. It goes up whenever XOP is going up. So just keep an eye on the potential rebound here. Again, it's very, very oversold. It's literally at the 20 level on the RSI. So that's very, very oversold. We might see a rebound here, guys. We might see a rebound. So I'm keeping an eye on that. So that's one I'm watching for tomorrow, guys. XOP, drip, um... Uh, what's the other one? Uh, uh, Gush, right? I'm obviously going to continue watching TVIX because TVIX is great when volatility is high, when the market is selling off. We've literally seen TVIX go up 40%. That was literally like a couple of weeks ago. Craziest day that I've seen in TVIX in over a year at this point. I'm also going to be looking at potential put options on Tesla, guys. I was actually looking at some, I think it was June 7th, the June 7th and June 14th uh, put options about two, three weeks out from, I believe, is it? Tom yeah, it's tomorrow. Two weeks out from tomorrow and three weeks out from tomorrow. Some potential put options on Tesla because Tesla right now, guys, this is not the analyst's favorite stock right now. Let's just put it that way, right? Analysts, they quite frankly hate Tesla right now. Wall Street hates Tesla. And when the public or when Wall Street and analysts hate Tesla, they keep dropping down their price targets. Although it may be a good business, this puts it in the public eye as a negative uh, negative thing, a negative company, a bad company, and people just keep selling off the stock, right? It's just not a popular stock right now. And people in our group have been absolutely just crushing it with Tesla put options. So when the time comes right, guys, I don't know if I'll be buying tomorrow put options. I might wait till next week. If we get a little bit of a rally here, that's when I'll make my decision on uh, put options two, three weeks out, maybe a week out. I'm still thinking about it right now. And I'm still thinking about what strike price I want to buy. But that's one put option play. Also, uh, Apple. A lot of people in our group have been doing very well with Apple. This is one that really just has been getting affected by the trade war in general, right? China, their sales in China have just been doing awful. The tariffs have just been crushing Apple. Literally, guys, I made a video, like, I feel like it was less than a month ago, talking about Apple stock at $215. Yes. 215 that is $35 higher from where we are right now. So understand how hard Apple's gotten hit. And I personally think as long as this trade war stuff is in full effect with China, and as long as sales in China are weak, 
right? I just think Apple's going to continue to get hit. And again, I don't know if you know this. The new reviewers might not know this. I know a lot of the older viewers know this. Apple is one of my bigger positions in my long-term portfolio because I just love Apple as a uh, up-and-coming dividend stock, actually. This one's growing its dividend immensely. I love it for that. And I also love it for the value that it provides. And for me to hedge against my position, my long-term position in Apple, you know, I might be playing some put options here. I might wait and see if we pop back up, maybe retest that 50 SMA. Maybe if we get back up to the mid 180s, that's when I'll pull the trigger on some two, three, maybe one month out uh, put options on Apple. That is something that I'm really interested in doing. So those are two option plays right now. Apple, Tesla, again, a bunch of the people in our group have been absolutely killing it with those. And to be honest, guys, I'm not watching and looking to uh, swing trade really any stocks at this point, right? A lot of the stocks, the patterns, the trends, they're not looking hot. Look at Apple, for example. A bunch of them are selling off like this. You know, take a look at these big tech stocks. You know, Google, why would you want to swing trade that, right? Why would you want to swing trade Facebook? Why would you want to swing trade Amazon? You know, Apple, we already looked at that one. You know, Netflix, it's looking like it's about to drop. A bunch of these stocks, they're not looking attractive. So for me, Mostly what I'm going to be doing is put options potentially on Tesla and Apple. I'm going to be trading the volatility in the market because I personally do not think the volatility is done. So TVIX is on my watch list as well as TQQQ and S. QQQ. These are two inverse ETFs. Are uh, they're two leveraged ETFs that trade on the Nasdaq 100, and these are great for volatility as well. Let me just pull this up real quick. So SQQQ. This is one that goes up when the markets the the Nasdaq is selling off at a 3x leveraged rate. So that means the Nasdaq selling off 1%. SQQQ is going to be up 3% for that day. And on the flip side, let's say the NASDAQ's doing well. Let's say it goes up 2%. The TQQQ ETF here is a leveraged 3x ETF that will go up with the NASDAQ 6%, three times that 2% that the NASDAQ ends up going up up. So those are just a couple that I am watching at this point, guys. You know, let's just go over some commodities very quickly. Uh, some other um, things that we personally uh, uh, keep an eye on and track on this channel. You know, gold is back in the 1280s. It's down about $1.60 today. Crude oil actually took a huge dump today, down to $58.15. The VIX, again, looking to come back here up about $2.17. At the close today, natural gas is looking to make a little comeback back up to $2.58 today, looking to reverse up, uh, uh, up a little bit here, which is looking pretty, pretty good. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all have been killing it out there in the markets, guys. These times are very, very fun for me. I personally love volatility. I love when the stock market gets like this. It's just fun for me, right? because I'm doing this every single day. I'm not going to lie to you all. Sometimes it's boring out there, right? Sometimes the stock market is just kind of boring, but times like this, it's spiced up a bit. Trade war drama, a bunch of things with the economy, the global economy. There's just stuff going on every single day. It just fuels my fire, and I just find it very, very fun. So if you guys enjoyed this video, Feel free to hit that like button again. It really supports me, and I appreciate every single one of you guys out there doing that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. And drop a comment. Let me know what you guys ended up doing today. What are your thoughts? with the market right now. Are we going to sell off further? Is there a trade deal around the corner? Let me know what you guys think, what you guys are doing, and I'll respond to every single one of you guys in the comment section. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Again, thank you all for watching, taking your time out to watch the video. Peace out.